Gene Wilde was also 19 and brand new to the industry when she shot with Madison in March of 2018, having only acted in adult films for a month. She describes arriving at a house filled with women, including Madison's wife and business partner, Kelly, a 52-year-old adult industry veteran. Immediately, I was greeted by the women preparing the paperwork. A PA who was a woman, the makeup artist was a woman, and they had a hairstylist who was a woman. And the wife greeted me, while it recalls. They had all women on set, so I felt empowered. It really made me put my guard down. Then I left the house of women, and that's when it started to get really predatory. And that's interesting how they have this set up. They have two houses? They left the house of women. I assumed before reading this article that this was all happening on one estate, but there's two houses. It makes me wonder, like, is the other house on the same estate? Is this like a big ranch? Is it a neighborhood? Why would he need another house? It, it makes me think like Kelly and Ryan aren't really a couple anymore. Maybe they're not really living together or someone has a problem with the sex occurring in their residence, which kind of defeats the whole point of porn fidelity. I thought it was all supposed to be about like, hey, they're this happy swinging sort of sexy couple doing all this kind of stuff and they're each okay with it. They're bringing other people into their marriage. See, it's all a lie. It's all a big fat lie. Okay. So they leave the house and that's when it started to get really predatory. Many of the women the Daily Beast spoke to accused Madison of introducing young female talent to his wife, who also occasionally does hair and makeup and or handles their paperwork to create a false sense of security that immediately evaporates when they're transported to his home five minutes down the road where he shoots his scenes. The Madisons did not respond to multiple emails, calls, and DMs requesting comment for this report. So it seems like the premise of this piece is to shift all the blame on the guy. But like I said in the beginning, and it could be, it could be that Ryan Madison is this American psycho, complete monster, completely manipulative, you know, has this agenda from the very beginning to, you know, use Kelly, poor Kelly Madison. Ooh, Kelly, poor Kelly, just this big victim in the entire thing to where she gets used as a front to feed Ryan's, you, you know, insatiable lust for rough sex. Real quick, I'm going to look, I want to see how long Ryan Madison has been in the industry. Let's go to IAFD to find out. He started at 27 from 2003 to 2020. Let's see what his earlier work was. Was it always Kelly? It's starting to look that way. He worked for something called Juicy Entertainment also. I'm just trying to figure out how long he's been with this woman. Because something's not quite right about this entire story. He came in through her. Okay. Kelly and Lana's first threesome, 2003. So she owns him. He's been with her from the start. So even, you know, just a theory. And, and I'm not forgiving him or excusing him. I just like to look at things from a multitude of um, perspectives. He could want to leave her at this stage. She could want to get rid of him, but he could also want to leave her. And if he wanted to leave her and she didn't want to let him go, she would make sure that she completely obliterates his reputation so that no one else would want to work with him anymore in the future. Also, so 
he will be looked at unfavorably in the legal sphere should he decide to attempt to take her to court for the portion of the business that he would rightfully own because she is the headliner. It's all about Kelly. Kelly Madison, the woman is always the draw when it comes to the adult entertainment industry. Um, but he's been the male talent all this time, probably for the majority of the scene shot. Because if you notice in this article, not very much is said about Kelly with the exception of, oh, she creates this environment to where I feel like I'm lured into this realm of safety. And then when the girl goes to shoot with Ryan, it doesn't seem like Kelly is there. Who's holding the camera? Is it all POV? Does he just put it on a tripod? Do they, does he have the cameras mounted around his house or something? I'm going to have to look at the content myself because I'm curious about this. Because um, she could feasibly say, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that he was being so rough with these girls. It seemed to me like everything was just a-okay. Tee hee hee. I'm blind with big boobs. Look at me. I'm innocent. That's what they do. All right, let's get back to this. All right. <clears throat> Many of the women the Daily Beast spoke to accused Madison of introducing the young female talent to his wife, who also occasionally does hair and makeup and or handles their paperwork to create a false sense of security that immediately evaporates when they're transported to his home five minutes down the road where he shoots his scene. It's a strange dynamic when a guy is trying to hurt women and is using his wife to make him seem more trustworthy, says Wild. Why would she think this? I mean, she is a young girl. So, I mean, even Kelly could be playing the part of, I'm just a wife in a happy marriage with this young guy and I have no idea that he's going to go and beat you up so that later he doesn't do the same with me. During the scene, which he also directed, she says he choked her aggressively with his um, genitalia until she couldn't breathe, even though she was given no heads up so it would be a rough scene, or no heads up that it would be a rough scene. Like many of the other women who have come forward against Madison, she also accuses him of pressuring her into doing a cream pie, which she says was sprung on her in the middle of the scene so that she couldn't say no or else risk not getting paid. So this dude, at least this article makes it seem like this dude is doing real cream pies. That's not a traditional practice in the adult entertainment industry. At least that was not my experience. From my experience, they utilized pina colada mix. Actually, when I came out and I told people about that, there were people who got mad at me for revealing that little um, industry secret. But it's true. At least it's true if you set your boundaries in advance and you demand a certain level of um, respect as an adult actress. But these girls, they're being conditioned to think that they can't say no, that they're not going to get paid unless they agree to something that breaches their boundaries. And if these allegations are true, this dude is trying to get somebody pregnant. Quote, I said okay to so many things I wasn't okay with because I wanted it all to be over, she remembers. I thought, I'll get paid and it will make this experience be worth it in some way, even though it's awful. If I don't get paid for what I've already went through, I'd be so devastated. I wonder how much she was paid. I wonder what their going rate is. She adds... He didn't even have the decency to give me the opportunity to consent. He just took it. He basically said, 
you're my property now because I'm paying you to do this so I can just use your body however I want to get off. That is what made me feel violated the most. Mm. Afterward, Wild sprinted to the bathroom and burst into tears. I had been holding in my tears from the beginning and I didn't break in order to finish the, finish the scene, she says. I finished the, the scene, called my agent, and he said, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm going to need to have a talk with him because he's done this to other girls and it's not okay. And I thought, why did you send me here if you knew he'd done this to other girls? I'm still shocked about that to this day. <laughs> Who's the damn agent? Oh, Wilde's agent at the time was John O'Byrne from East Coast Talent. The same man who two years later sent his client Annabelle Red to Madison. O'Byrne did not respond to multiple requests for comment. Of course not. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. This is horrible if it's true. I mean, if it's not true, this is definitely incredibly creative marketing for this content by um, the Madisons. Because a lot of people, they would read this and they'd be like, ooh, I've got to see this scene, <laughs> you know? But um, if it's true, it's horrible. But I wonder who prompted this article to be written. Let's see. You know, I'll have to investigate that. I'm going to see who each and every girl is currently represented by. Because this could also be agency wars. Someone's trying to take out East Coast talent. He doesn't care. Ryan Madison is an evil piece of shit rapist. But John O'Byrne from East Coast talent is just as complicit in the rape of so many girls, says Wilde. You're sending your girls to do scenes with a rapist just to get your fucking cut. That's what she said. Apparently Madison's behavior is well known amongst porn agents. We haven't sent girls to him for about two and a half years. One of the adult industry's top agents told the Daily Beast. The girls can feel very isolated out there. Way the hell out in the middle of nowhere. Well, they're not in the middle of nowhere. They're just not in the urban metropolis. It's cheaper to live out there if you want to have a big house or two houses in the case of the Madisons. The thing is, everybody knows it. I've mentioned it to other agents before, but some are still willing to take the risk. 